बुक रिकमेंडेशन फॉर स्पेशल थियोरी ऑफ रिलेटिविटी और एस टी आर सो विच इज द बेस्ट बुक फॉर यू टू स्टडी इफ यू आर स्टडिंग द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ एस टी आर एज अ बिगिनर इंटरमीडिएट और एन एडवांस स्टूडेंट दैट इज द क्वेश्चन दैट आई एम गोइंग टू ट्राई टू आंसर टूडे इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो सो वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल फॉर द लव ऑफ फिजिक्स आई एम दिव्य ज्योति दास योर फ्रेंडली नेबरहुड स्पाइडर मैन नो योर फ्रेंडली नेबरहुड फिजिक्स मैन नो जस्ट अ रैंडम यूट्यूबर योर टीचर Uh, of physics so str is one of those popular and extremely fascinating fields of study because it reveals to us some very weird ways in which the universe works namely time dilation space time etc etc and not only physics students but even uh, laymen and enthusiasts are very much interested in the field of special relativity or relativity in general therefore having a good book to study or rely upon if you are studying this subject is extremely helpful as it can guide you through that particular subject uh, without you having to get lost in all the different kinds of contents that are available out there so i'm going to divide today's video in two portions first i'm going to talk about those books that are not really devoted to str that are devoted to some broader subjects but str is contained within them partially so they have devoted certain chapters to special relativity but those chapters are written in such a beautiful manner that it's helpful to go through them and the second portion of the video i'm going to devote to those books which are exclusively dedicated to special relativity now special relativity as a course in university may be a one semester course but in most of the cases they are not really a one semester course they are part of a one semester course where there are club together with some other subject maybe like with mechanics or electromagnetic theory or maybe uh, general relativity or maybe classical mechanics something like that depending upon how much content you are required to study so certain uh, beginner level courses only focus on the historical background of str the postulates lorentz transformations etc sometimes the courses take you beyond to space time diagrams four vectors and even tensors so depending upon what content you are interested in i'm trying to uh, i'm going to specify what kind of content is available in different kinds of books so that you can make the right decision of which kind of a book that should be helpful for you now i'm going to be recommending at least around 12 to 13 books not all of them are required for you maybe you can just uh, go through one or two of them based on what it is that you are going to study so my recommendations are going to be based on my own experiences of reading some of those books and some of those books i have referenced and a general idea of which books are generally helpful for what level of a student the very first book is not really a book on str it's a general book on uh, uh, physics for beginners the very famous the feynman lectures on physics volume 1 The Feynman Lectures on Physics Volume 1 written by Feynman himself is a book on physics that is devoted to a large number of topics and this devotes only 3 chapters to special relativity. Now this is a beautiful book the language is very simple and the content is very concise very briefly explained but in a very beautiful fashion. So if you are a beginner okay so this is a book for beginners only. So if you are either a school student or just got into an undergraduate program in some university then to get an idea about what special relativity is to get an introduction to the subject you may go through those three chapters in the feynman lectures now i will not recommend this book for intermediate students or those students who are preparing from the perspective of an examination in an university to rely upon this single handedly because it doesn't really contain problems or exercises and it doesn't even go too much into detail into the subject so this is just for a brief introduction to the subject you can read through it these are just three chapters it won't take too much of your time and anyways this is a good book to have for beginners and intermediate level students the second book that i'm going to refer to is also a book which is not really devoted to str but it's devoted to mechanics So this is a very famous book an introduction to mechanics by Kleppner and Colin Co. So this is a very very good book if you are studying Newtonian mechanics. This book devotes the final four chapters to special relativity. The language is very simple. The content is extremely descriptive. It's written in a very very good uh, readable manner and the contents are extremely detailed. So I would definitely recommend this for any kind of an undergraduate student. who is pursuing some sort of a university course on relativity you can rely upon this books because this covers mostly what is required for a beginner to intermediate level student so a general introduction to the history of str postulates of str lorentz transformations and the various relativistic phenomena like length contraction time dilation doppler effect relativistic energy momentum all those topics are covered in a very detailed fashion in this particular book 
and it also contains a large number of exercises as well as problems so yeah you can rely on this particular book it also contains an additional chapter on four vectors uh, but it has only discussed very briefly i'm not really a fan of the four vector chapter in this particular book because uh, it has uh, done a couple of shortcuts. You see four vectors uh, rely upon an understanding of how space-time geometry is different from Euclidean space and how measurements of length in space-time is different from measurements of length in Euclidean space. But that requires going a little bit in detail in that particular subject. Sometimes some of the authors, they rely upon a shortcut. The shortcut is to introduce an iota in front of the time component, which is what Kleppner and Colin Co has done in this particular book. And I'm not really a fan of that particular approach. The reason being, I was having a conversation with one of my students once and he said, sir, uh, time is uh, imaginary. And I said, why do you think time is imaginary? And he was like, sir, but we introduce an iota in, in the time axis. And I didn't know how to explain it to him that it is just a shortcut that sometimes some of the authors uh, use to explain a difficult topic like four vectors, but that's not the actual approach. So I'm not really a fan of that particular approach because that's just a shortcut. It's not really what happens, you see. Uh, the way you measure lengths in space-time is slightly different from how you measure lengths in space. Uh, in space-time, when you measure lengths or when you perform an inner product or a scalar product, you introduce a negative sign before the time components because that is how the metric tensor corresponding to space-time geometry is. So without going so much into details about that, sometimes the authors introduce an iota sign. Uh, but then again, it's good for an introduction, but not for a detailed study of four vectors. But all the other topics are covered in extremely brilliant fashion. The next book that I'm going to cover is Introduction to Electrodynamics by Griffiths. Anyways, this is an excellent book. The earlier book was excellent book for mechanics. This is an excellent book for electromagnetism. And this devotes one chapter to electromagnetism and relativity. The chapter is slightly different from the earlier book on Kleppner. Kleppner was very much detailed, but it did not include electromagnetism or relativistic effects of electromagnetism, which is what is included here. I like the fact that this book also includes a couple of thought experiments on special relativity. It also talks about four vectors and a little bit of a brief description of what uh, space-time diagrams are, but it also talks uh, in length about the effects of magnetism and how it arises from relativity. So those are some additional things and additional content available in this particular book. So for an intermediate or a beginner level introduction to STR, uh, this is a good book. You can refer to that particular last chapter. So by book, I mean the last chapter on STR. And anyways, in general, this is an excellent book for electromagnetism. The next book that I'm going to refer is Concepts of Modern Physics by Arthur Beiser. Again, not a book devoted to STR. It's a book that contains almost uh, something of everything, quantum mechanics, uh, nuclear physics, particle physics, solid state physics, and even STR. The very first chapter is devoted to special relativity. Now, it's not as advanced as uh, slightly compared to uh, Kleppner and electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetism by Griffiths. Uh, it's kind of very basic, so it's for beginners and intermediate students only. But if you're studying STR for the very first time, then the very first chapter of Concepts of Modern Physics is going to give you a very beautiful introduction to the subject. You can even use it for your university uh, course uh, exam preparation because everything is given in a very beautiful illustrative manner. There are lots of diagrams. The illustration is very beautiful. Uh, and the order and the, the sequence of presenting the formulas, the principles is done in a very orderly fashion. So you can use this book if you don't have too much time to read, but you want to go through a quick revision. So for a quick revision, or a quick introduction to the subject if you don't want to go through too much text and you just want an introduction as a reference or a quick revision then this is an excellent book but this is not very advanced it doesn't contain four vectors it doesn't contain any kind of tensors it doesn't contain too much about space-time diagrams it just contains the postulates about str Lorentz transformations that's all but sometimes for beginner students that itself is more than enough now there's one more book uh, that i don't have the hard copy of right now that is classical mechanics by tai l chow now this is a good book for classical mechanics but it devotes one chapter to special relativity now that chapter is very well written because it's very detailed extremely descriptive and the content is suitable for both intermediate and sometimes uh, to advanced students because number one the entire content about the theory is there number two it contains a large number of problems and exercises what i loved about this particular book is that it contains a derivation 
uh, of how the Maxwell's equations are not invariant under Galilean transformations. So that goes into the history of STR. Not many books contain that kind of a derivation. So if you want to look at how the Maxwell's equations uh, relate to the Galilean transformations, that important derivation is given in this particular book. It also contains a brief description of space-time diagrams, a detailed description of four vectors, collision problems, conservation laws, and an introduction to relativistic Lagrangian and Hamiltonian dynamics. One additional thing I liked about this particular book is that it contains a very simple thought experiment to prove the uh, formula of E is equal to mc square which I really really like. So this is a book which is recommended for undergraduates, uh, intermediate to advanced students. So these uh, books, the Feynman lectures, the mechanics by Kleppner, Colin Co, electromagnetic theory by uh, Griffiths, concepts of modern physics by Arthur Beiser and classical mechanics by Tai L. Chow. These are all books which are not devoted to STR but they contain one or two or three chapters on STR but that's written in a very very nice fashion. So if you want to go through any one of them, you can go through that. It will give you a good introduction to the subject of STR, but it will also give you a good introduction to the other subjects as well. So for example, Kleppner is really good for mechanics. Uh, Griffiths is really good for electromagnetic theory. Tyel Chow is really, really good for uh, classical mechanics. And Arthur Beiser is good overall for, it's kind of a jack of all trades. It contains a little bit of nuclear physics, a little bit of particle physics, a little bit of quantum mechanics, a little bit of STR. So it contains everything, uh, Arthur Beiser book, this one. So I really like the fact that you can use it as a reference for uh, uh, various different kinds of uh, subjects, uh, especially for beginners. Now let's go ahead to books that are purely devoted to uh, special relativity. All right, so the very first book is Albert Einstein's Relativity, the Special and General Relativity. This is a book written by Albert Einstein himself. So this is a book not for uh, someone doing a course, university course in either special or general relativity. This is only for supplemental reading. So if you are interested in uh, getting a glimpse into the mind of Albert Einstein, because this is a book written by Albert Einstein himself, then you can use it as a supplemental reading just to read something and decide. You can't really rely upon that for a university course preparation because this doesn't contain many problems or even uh, exercises. It doesn't contain too much details into the theory. It's just an introduction to the different aspects of relativity from the perspective of Albert Einstein. So you can use it as just as some sort of a fun reading. All right. So the next book, which is, I would say, a must have for uh, any beginner to intermediate student uh, studying special relativity is Introduction to Special Relativity by Robert Resnick. So this is a quite uh, popular book in relativity. Uh, and the language is good. Uh, the, the content is extremely detailed and descriptive. There are a large number of problems and exercises. Uh, it also contains a chapter on space-time diagrams. I really love the fact that it included the resolution of the twin paradox using space-time diagrams. This is something that you don't really see in many books out there. And also the last chapter is devoted to the equivalence principle. So this is not a big book. Uh, it's a small, very small book, uh, but it's like a must have if you are a beginner student or an intermediate student. So it doesn't contain anything about tensors or four vectors, but the introduction part to STR, the historical background to STR, Michelson model experiment, all those things are, uh, given in a very nice fashion in this particular book. So if you want to keep one book uh, handy, this is one. The next book is an interesting book, Six Ideas That Shape the Physics Unit Are The Laws of Physics Are Frame Independent by Thomas A. Moore. Now I say this is an interesting book because it's not like your typical book uh, where they just give you everything, the definitions and the formulas and the principles. Instead, uh, it's very text heavy. You have to read the book in detail and the author tries to develop the ideas of special relativity in a very intuitive manner. So there is a lot of effort in trying to develop the ideas of special relativity uh, sort of in an intuitive sense and uh, and sort of there's a lot of reading to do. So if you're looking for something that is uh, uh, quick, some, a book where you can do a quick uh, revision or an introduction to the subject, this is not for it. If you have time to read about the subject in detail, um, then only I would uh, refer this book to you if you are a beginner or an intermediate student so that you can develop those ideas about relativity which are not really very commonsensical in nature. It contains a large number of problems but uh, I would not really suggest this book as the only book for you to have if you are preparing for a university course. You can have this as a supplement copy or maybe for an additional reading you can refer to this particular book. The next book is a very famous book on special relativity by A.P. French. 
So this is a book I would recommend for intermediate to advanced students. Uh, this is completely devoted to special relativity. It goes into the historical background of relativity, Michaels and Morley experiment, the Lorentz transformations, uh, relativistic mechanics and uh, uh, relativistic electrodynamics, collisions and a little bit about four vectors and a very brief description about space-time diagrams. Now this is not a book I'll be referring to for beginners. It is mostly for intermediate to advanced students but it's not really very advanced because it doesn't really contain tensors or uh, even uh, four vectors in detail. So it's more like an intermediate sort of a book. Uh, this is a very old edition. I think this book was written in the 1970s. So again, uh, when you re read old books, then uh, the language and the presentation is slightly different compared to if you read modern books. So modern books, we are more used to them. The notations and the symbols and the presentation is very smooth. Old books, they have a little bit of a different uh, presentation. Sometimes for some people, you can feel a little bit of a friction because of that. So keep that in mind. The presentation, uh, is slightly, I feel, not very smooth. Anyways, the next book is Introduction to Special Relativity by Wolfgang Rindler. Okay, again, this is a book for intermediate to advanced students only. I would not suggest this book as the go-to book for special relativity, but only as additional reading because it contains uh, some uh, chapters, especially on relativistic particle mechanics, relativistic electromagnetism, and relativistic optics. So if you are interested in those chapters, uh, then of course this is a good book to have. It does not go too much into the foundations of special relativity, it just goes straight into the subject itself. Again, this is a very old edition, I think it was written in the 1970s or 60s. So you can use it as a reference, you can go through this uh, if you're studying a course on STR in university. But make sure that this is an additional reading only because it doesn't really contain many problems or exercises to solve. And keep in mind that it does include uh, tensorial notations in multiple chapters. So you'll have to be familiar with that. Now let's go one step higher. The next book that I have for you is now most of my students, they are uh, sometimes uh, interested in Indian authors. So this is the theory of relativity by R.K. Patria. So if you're interested in an Indian author, and an advanced book. So this is not a book for beginners at all. So if you're a beginner or an intermediate student, this is not a book for you. But if you're an advanced student, you are interested in studying STR as well as GTR because this book, half of it is devoted to special relativity and the other half is devoted to general relativity, then you can refer this particular book. So it goes straight into the space-time transformations. It does a very good job of the 4D description of special relativity. It goes into relativistic electromagnetism, relativistic optics, and introduction to the theory of gravitation. Now, there is a lot of use of tensorial notation, so you'll have to be familiar with what tensors are uh, if you really want to go through this particular book. But if you are an advanced student and you are familiar with the historical background and the beginner level introduction to STR, and you want to go into, let's suppose, GTR and, uh, you know, uh, relativistic electromagnetism, for example, or relativistic optics, then you can refer to this particular book. Again, uh, this is an old book uh, written in the 1970s. R.K. Patria, The Theory of Relativity. Finally, the last book that I'm going to recommend, especially for university students, and these are all books that I'm referring uh, to students who are pursuing some sort of a course in STR in either college or university. From that perspective, the last book that I'm going to refer to is The Special Theory of Relativity by V. Devanathan. So this is an interesting book. Uh, I really liked it because it was written very recently. I think the last edition was in 2015. So compared to the other books which were written very, very long time back, like in the 1970s, 60s, 50s, that's like around 50 years back sometimes. And the presentation feels old. From that perspective, this is a very latest uh, book written by the author. So the language is kind of simple. However, even though it contains many of the contents of um, Lorentz transformations, Minkowski space, relativistic mechanics, collisions, as well as relativistic electrodynamics, I feel that uh, the presentation could have been a little bit more smooth. I feel that the organization is slightly sort of disorganized, everything is clubbed together. So you may not rely on this book single-handedly, but you can definitely use it as a reference, an additional reference to that particular subject. Again, there is uses of tensorial notations, so you'll have to be familiar with that. So for intermediate to advanced students, if you're in the library, you can just go through that, and if you like it, you can use it. All right, so these are the books, books partly devoted to STR and books fully devoted to STR. One final recommendation for a book that is not really for university students, uh, it's for somewhere in between layman and university students. So there are certain books in the market which are uh, geared towards layman, like uh, for the common man to understand some complicated topics like uh, Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins or Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. 
and then there are books that are only geared towards university students who have some understanding of certain kind of mathematical requirements and but so in this particular spectrum this book lies somewhere in the middle so you may be a layman but there is a lot of usage of mathematics and you cannot really use this single handedly for a university course because there are no exercises no problems but as i said special relativity is one of those subjects which really really uh, sort of draws enthusiasts into it so a lot of people are extremely fascinated and passionate about this subject so if you are one of those students then uh, this is a book for some serious fun reading the special relativity and classical field theory the theoretical minimum by leonard susskind and art friedman it's it's a quite big book and there's a lot of mathematics involved so if you want to get an idea about uh, what special relativity is what classical field theory is then uh, and you have some sort of a basic understanding of this subject you are a physics student uh, then for some fun reading you can rely on this particular book now all of these books that i've referred to are based on my own experiences of books that i've read books that i've referenced books that i'm generally aware of you don't really need to go through all of them these are total of 13 books that i've referred and you don't really need to go through all of them if you're a beginner you just need one book let's suppose if you have the uh, introduction to mechanics clefner colin core as a college student i think that should be more than sufficient right but if you want to go a little bit more into detail uh, maybe you can uh, take a look at introduction to special relativity by robert resnick again for beginner and intermediate students for advanced students maybe you can look at rk patria or especially uh, the devnathan book i liked because it contains a, a, a little bit of a detailed explanation of minkowski space and space time diagrams so these are the books that i have uh, for you uh, based on what you have heard from me if there is some book that appeals to you you can go through them maybe in your nearby library or you can look up the pdf online uh, so that is all uh, i have done a series of lectures on special relativity in the past uh, i have used many of these books as a reference for those lectures uh, if you have uh, some book in mind that i have not mentioned in this video but you went through that book and you really really loved it Uh, please make sure to write it in the comment section i'll probably pin it or something if uh, you have some sort of a recommendation from your side so that is all for today i'm divyajyoti das and that is all thank you very much i'll see you next time bye bye